planning a special dinner party this weekend and I really want to show off to all my guests. I love entertaining, I love showing off. In fact, I've written a book all about my favourite recipes. Today, I want to share with you my top tips on how to have a fabulous and stress-free dinner party. Now, whether you've got a full house or just a couple of guests, planning ahead is the key. First things first, the menu. Pick things that you're familiar with. Now is definitely not the time to be experimenting with something you've never made before. Try and choose things that you can prepare well in advance. One of my favourites at the moment is a seafood lasagna. You can make it the day before, pop it in the fridge and just cook it when everyone arrives. Nobody wants to be stuck in the kitchen when all their guests are having fun in the other room. Now don't leave all the shopping to the last minute. I try and get mine a day or so beforehand, leaving the day itself time for me to cook the food and prepare the table and of course squeeze in some extra time to prepare myself. Now I really like my food to impress but after a busy week at work or a mad week looking after the kids I'm sometimes really pushed for time. Now I'm a big fan of little touches that are sure to impress. Colours, cuisines, occasions, choosing the theme is the really fun bit. Now tonight I'm going to do Italian so I thought I'd bring a subtle Italian feel to the table. I've got out all my best crockery and I'm going to bring in some red and green splashes to the table with some flowers and a runner. I have some balsamic vinegar and olive oil in bottles just to drizzle over the food. Some lovely Chianti red wine. I'm serving lovely bread in some nice rustic bowls and salad with some lovely salad servers. And for my little aperitif, I thought I'd use some espresso cups. It's really all about tying the table into the food so you can all relax and have fun. Now there's lots of shortcuts and cheats that you can do, such as buying part of your meal ready-made and then adding to it. For example, who would have guessed that this shop-bought minestrone soup wasn't homemade by adding just a little drizzle of olive oil, a twist of black pepper, and then some delicately placed croutons before serving. Now desserts are also a great way of saving time. I'll often buy a gorgeous lemon or chocolate tart from my local deli and then just tart it up with a few little finishing touches. So serve individual slices on plates, just with some homemade ice cream from during the week. It's a lovely scroll on the side, on top of some cocoa powder or icing sugar just to stop it from slipping around. And then finish with some lovely shavings of white and dark chocolate. I guarantee this will go down a storm. Now cooking is one thing, but the secret to a really successful dinner party is getting the atmosphere right, so everybody, including yourself, can relax. Take a bit of time to think about the lighting, it can really set the mood of the evening. Avoid tall candles so you can all see each other at the table, and definitely don't use scented candles, you want the smell of your food to wet people's appetite. And don't forget the music. Set it at just the right level for background music, nothing too heavy. And it's great fun compiling your own playlist beforehand so you don't have to play DJ all night. Be sure to end your dinner party on a high note by serving some delicious quality Italian coffee. It'll be the last thing that your guests taste, so you really want to end on a high note. Anything else will literally leave a bad taste in their mouths. Now I'd be lost without my automatic machine because it does everything for me once I've programmed it in and it looks pretty impressive too. In fact, I better go and make myself look impressive. Good luck with your dinner parties.